Russia attacks America too, as reported on KTAR-FM radio, Phoenix, AZ, on January 17, 2014, the cyber attacks upon Target Incorporated had Russian mafia fingerprints on the identity theft of over 100 million Americans. If one knows their Russian history, we know that since the pretend collapse of the former Soviet Union, the KGB changed uniforms and ran the Russian Mafia, which also happens to be the origin source of Putin. The notorious Russian Mafia, the Russian KGB, there is no difference. For that matter, the notorious drug-running America Mafia, the CIA EG Air America, Iran Contra, creation of the law Cocaine Street, cocaine-dealing gangs, there is no difference. The CIA and the KGB do not work exclusively for their host nations. These two rogue organizations do the heavy lifting for the banksters, who seek to subjugate humanity and impose a dramatic depopulation agenda. For Bible-believing Christians, I am sure that you will take note of how this is foretold in Scripture. I will let all of you fill in the details on the comment board connected to this article. The last great American garage sale both countries' mafia intelligence operations have acted as currency destabilization forces, as well see confessions of an economic hitman. Further, my sources tell me that the story about how these two intelligence operations employed economic sabotage agents to facilitate the promotion of the derivatives market, which led to the collapse of the European and American financial markets, necessitating the bailouts. Since the declared end of the Cold War, in the late 1980s, if a Russian citizen wanted vodka, jeans or food, they obtained these products from the former KGB Aka the Russian Mafia and these products frequently were obtained on the black market, which became bigger than the legitimate economy. Noted enemies of humanity, such as George Soros, are part of this movement designed to collapse economies and hold governments hostage. The American derivatives debt is now listed at a hefty $1.5 quadrillion. The entire GDP of the planet is only listed at between $65 trillion and $79 trillion. What the bastards from Basel have discovered is that the American economy is resilient, because the American people still possess a high degree of creativity in some circles. The banksters fear that a currency collapse may not produce the utter devastation of the United States that was once hoped for. This is what George Soros has worked so hard to achieve. Therefore, Plan B has been initiated. Plan B is the invasion of the United States from both within and without. Stark reminders as a reminder, previous parts of the series have documented the existence of Russian troops on American soil. Personally, in the last 30 days, and I have now received 53 email notifications of Russian military troops training on American soil. In the previous article, I documented a bilateral agreement between FEMA and the Russian military to bring tens of thousands of Russian troops to American soil. I also previously noted, through the good work of Sherry Wilcox, that Russian troops have already been spotted in the United States wearing Department of Homeland Security uniforms. CHTTP YouTube SVVV52 versus Goo for just one example. I have previously interviewed, on the Common Sense show, eyewitnesses to a significant Russian troop buildup in the country, with guests, such as Dr. Susan Hellman, and others. Grave warnings on December 22, 2013, I interviewed former Deep Cover CIA agent, Dr. Jim Garrow who was explicit about the presence of both Russian and Chinese troops in America and in northern Mexico. He noted that the Russians are operating in cooperation with DHS. This is what Sherry Wilcox uncovered in the above-mentioned video. My insider sources have been providing me with this information for the past 18 months and it matches the Garrow account, word for word. All of my sources state that we will have a false flag attack s which will be followed by a declaration of martial law, and will be largely enforced by Russian and Chinese soldiers. I have also been informed 
that as communities are forcibly vacated and relocated to detention facilities at stadiums, malls and heretofore secret camps, the remnants, or stragglers, of these communities will be sprayed with specifically designed bio-agents, which are specially designed to completely terminate all forms of life, which may have evaded the roundups. I am now ju just beginning to receive another piece of the puzzle, which strongly appears to justify the coming bio-agent attacks. Have you ever wondered why various government agencies are hell-bent on obtaining as much DNA as possible? It is being obtained in order to be used in research. This is research which is designed to bypass certain HLA typings. In the past 48 hours, I have been approached by two whistleblowers who have worked in testing facilities both in California and Arizona. In both cases, these whistleblowers tell stories of research related to methodologies on how to bypass all HLA typings with regard to certain pathogens. The research is so volatile that many of the research personnel have fallen ill. Most disturbingly, the connecting dots are suggestive of the fact that some entity within this country is doing research on how to make a bio-agent so completely destructive so as not to leave any survivors. If 10 people were to be exposed to Ebola, 90% would die agonizing deaths, as the victims would meet their collective demise, by bleeding out of every cavity in the body as their organs literally melted down. However, 10% would survive, because they would possess a special HLA typing, which would help them to recover from the pathogen. The research appears to be seeking to create a pathogen which will be 100% fatal, as it will overcome all types of HLA typings. What I am learning from the accounts of both whistleblowers, is that foreign doctors are involved in this research and the experimental subject's medical records are being deleted so as to not leave any trace. My military sources tell me, that these pathogens will be delivered through specially designed drones, and that both Russian and the United States intelligence sources are jointly conducting this operation. Now, to the $64 million dollar question, what does this have to do with Russian troops? The Russians have sufficient motivation to engage in an invasion of the United States, because it fits both their national interests to do so and it satisfies the banking masters that they and the CIA both serve. Putin and Obama are playing for the same side. Even if Russia and America goes to war, it is planned because they are taking their marching orders from the banksters, which control every single central bank on the planet. The following constitutes the Russian motivation for attacking the United States in order to obliterate our country even when a coming economic collapse may not. Stalin's secret plans to invade Alaska in 1951 It has long been in the cards for Russia to invade the United States. In 1999, at a conference held at Yale University, previously secret Russian documents revealed that Russian dictator Joseph Stalin had undergone extensive planning in preparation to invade North America as early as 1951. The event was one of a series of programs sponsored by the Washington, D.C.-based Cold War International History Project CWIHP, which monitors new documents pertaining to the Cold War. The Yale Conference centered on Stalin's relationship with the United States. These documents, from the Cold War, revealed that Stalin had a definitive plan to attack Alaska in 1951-52 and had undergone major military preparations in anticipation of the invasion. Russia has always considered itself to be landlocked and this served as the major motivation for Russia's planned incursion, which would have given Russia access to good seaports. Stalin subsequently died and the plans were abandoned, at least temporarily. Historic Russian policy dictates an American invasion is inevitable it is clear that any Russian attack upon the United States will come through Alaska and I am now of the opinion that Russia will not wait for us to attack Iran before attacking the United States. The following paragraphs will demonstrate why Alaska is so vitally important to the fulfillment of Russia's communist plans for world domination. British geographer and military historian Sir Hafford MacKinder in 1904, wrote an article that changed how politicians and military men viewed the world. It was a perception that influenced Hitler to send his troops eastward in an attack upon Russia in 1940. It was also the driving force 
that led to the underpinnings for superpower foreign policy, which guided foreign policy for both sides during the Cold War. The theory that had so influenced nearly three generations of strategists was called simply, the Heartland Theory. Basically, Matt Hinder's Heartland Theory viewed geopolitical military history as a struggle between land-based and sea-based powers. Matt Hinder believed the world had become a closed system, with virtually no new lands left for the Europeans' powers to discover, to conquer, and to fight over without creating chaos elsewhere. According to the theory the common denominator for world conflict has been reduced to sea powers versus land-based powers, which would subsequently struggle for dominance of the world, and the ultimate victor would be in a position to set up a world empire. The determining factor in this struggle was physical geography, man and not nature initiates, but nature in large measure controls. Obama is complicit in the planned Russian invasion Alaska to Obama has given away seven strategic, oil-rich Alaskan islands to the Russians at a time when we could be going to war with Russia. This exemplifies Obama's treason and is the fulfillment of the MacKinder heartland theory. At minimum, the oil, alone, from these islands should be considered to be a military asset. I remain very concerned that these seven islands in the Arctic Ocean and Bering Sea could also be used as a military staging area from which to invade Alaska and defend its new claims of the mineral-rich resources at the North Pole. The giving away of seven strategic, oil-rich islands is a good start to support a claim of treason, because Obama is purposely weakening the defense of Alaska. Also, local residents along the Alaskan coast have reported to me that the massive overflights along the coast have all but ceased. The F-22s have disappeared. The Air Force says the flights have been suspended because of oxygen concerns, which are impacting the pilots. Then shouldn't the flights be replaced by F-16s? What about national security? These overflights have been a staple of Alaskan defense since the Cold War. If we are close to war with Iran and its ally, Russia, then shouldn't we beefing up our patrols in Alaska? Recently, the ATF asked for gun registration records in Alaska. Perhaps the Russians need to know, in advance, where the most civilian opposition will come from when they take over Alaska. Perhaps the Russians need to know which areas to deploy HLA resistant bioweapons. Russian troops began to carry out joint anti-terrorism drills in America in May of 2012. What terrorists could they be practicing for? The influx of Russian soldiers maybe began just as a trickle with a couple of dozen of Russians stationed at Fort Carson. However, with a FEMA bilateral agreement, it is clear the floodgates have burst wide open and Obama's treachery is fully exposed. There exists documented facts which support the reasons why Alaska should be placed on high alert. Russia recently sent four brigades to the Arctic. The Arctic can be used as a staging area for the invasion of the North Pole to protect its recent mineral claims, but more importantly, this area of the Arctic could serve as a base of operations from which to invade Alaska with the help of pre-positioned assets within the state. In March of 2012, with a microphone left on, Obama made an unguarded comment to Russian leader Dmitry Medvedev to be more lenient on nuclear issues because he could be more flexible after the November election. Does more flexible mean killing the Keystone Pipeline prior to giving away seven rich Alaskan islands to the Russians? Does more flexible mean letting the Russians train in Colorado Springs and in Alaska? Does being more flexible mean compromising our defense of Alaska? More Russian treachery revealed it is now on the record that Putin said that he was going to make his country the greatest country, economically as he said in print, that he is claiming part of Alaska. Adding fuel to the fire, it is now clear that Russia is also establishing plans for an Arctic industrialization. In geopolitical and military terms, it could be an easy claim to make if the military resistance in Alaska is greatly compromised, and it has been. The last thing that country should do on a potential frontline area is to close military facilities and bases, yet, this is exactly what is happening in Alaska. Obama and the Base Realignment and Closure Commission have been closing bases and or reducing base operations all through Alaska. It has gotten so bad that the Alaskan governor hired a lobbyist to prevent military reduction. 
Three years ago, a prominent Russian professor predicted the end of the United States. The professor stated that Alaska would return to the control of Russia, and that the United States would be split into six pieces. John McCain recently said I think it's very clear that Russian ambitions are to restore the old Russian Empire. Not the Soviet Union, but the Russian Empire. There is also a tunnel from Russia to Alaska being constructed. Are we funding our own demise with our tax money, which is designed to set up Russia's future? Last summer, Russia challenged West Coast detection capabilities of our military by making provocative moves with their submarines inside of our territorial waters. Also, in a stunning move, Putin banned adoptions of Russian children by American parents. Could it be likely that he is looking out for the Russian adoptees, as this is a reaction to what Putin knows is coming? Conclusion to those that say that Russia is a changed nation you are right. Russia has not changed because it is embracing Christianity, its government is decidedly playing for the dark side when it comes to spirituality. The Russians are not embracing democracy, as they still kill dissident journalists and the mafia runs the country. To those that think Russia is our friend, you are deluded, naive and vulnerable. Russia is not our friend, and if the American military does not step up and stop this madness, you will soon learn how real this threat is. Unlike George H.W. Bush used to constantly say, God bless America, I really mean it. Short of some kind of spiritual intervention, we are all in a great deal of danger.